Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three-year-old named Kylie and I have a 12-month-old named Mia. Dr. Montessori described the young child as being born with an absorbent mind. Quite literally, just as a sponge would absorb water, they are busy absorbing every single little detail in their environments from the moment that they're born without any discrimination or choice in the elements. She also observed that all children experience several predictable windows of opportunity between birth and age seven. And it is during these times that the child's interests are intensely focused on developing a certain skill or mastering a certain concept. And it is also during this period that they are most easily and naturally able to learn those things. She called these windows of opportunity sensitive periods. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to share with you everything that you need to know as a parent about sensitive periods and how you can help support your child through these sensitive periods in your Montessori home. Dr. Montessori likened a child's sensitive periods to the stages of butterfly metamorphosis, like the transformation from a tiny caterpillar to a chrysalis, and finally to a fully formed adult butterfly, a child also progresses through natural hardwired stages of development from which they emerge from each one primed and ready for the next. Although these sensitive periods are governed by nature and the child has no free will or control to alter them, they do ultimately experience each sensitive period in their own own unique way and so the experience of each sensitive period will vary from child to child. If a child is in the middle of a sensitive period it can be very easily observed because he or she will be showing very strong inclinations towards certain actions or activities that will naturally help them to master that skill or concept. We will go into a little bit more detail in just a moment on some of these examples. If a sensitive period has somehow been missed then it has been missed. The child cannot revert back to that sensitive period at a future time. However, this does not mean that the child cannot ever learn that concept or skill in the future. It's just that it will require a little bit more effort and it might be a little bit more difficult for the child than it naturally would have been had they attempted to master that concept or skill during its special sensitive period. A prime example of this is the absorption of language. It's pretty well commonly known that a child who is immersed in a multilingual environment from birth much more easily picks up all of those different languages and is able to become fluent in at least several of them without issue. Whereas if you take an adult later on in life who is trying to master different languages, they find that task a lot more difficult. Not impossible, but definitely harder. Fortunately, thanks to Dr. Montessori's astute observations, we do have a general idea of the timeline for when these different sensitive periods tend to occur. So it is possible for us as the adult to be ready to observe the child and look for signs of potentially entering a sensitive period. And then we can properly prepare the environment so that the child's absorbent mind can take full advantage of all of the learning opportunities that are available to them during that sensitive period when it is active. Dr. Montessori observed 11 different sensitive periods each of them beginning at varying times between the ages of birth and seven years old, and each of them also lasting for various different amounts of time. The first sensitive period is movement, which begins at birth. Children are born with a very limited range of motion, but very quickly they set out to develop all of their fine and gross motor skills. Some ways that you can support your child during this sensitive period would be to provide freedom of movement, avoid placing them in lots of different baby holding devices, give them the space that they need to stretch out and to move around and practice all of those skills that they are so desperately trying to practice. You also want to prepare the environment such that they have opportunities opportunities to develop all of these different gross and fine motor skills. So for example, if you notice that your baby is making attempts to roll over for the first time when they're very young, you might find a motivating, enticing object of some sort that catches their eye and their interest and place it just out of reach so that they have to reach for it a little bit and make that rolling over motion in order to get to it. For a baby who is learning to pull up and starting to cruise along furniture, you want to make sure that you 
have low furniture, like low open shelving or ottomans available in their environment so that they can practice. You might also consider around the age of nine months when your baby starts eating finger foods, cutting up the pieces of food that you're offering to them in small bite-sized pieces so that your baby has a natural motivation to actually learn how to use their pincer grip properly. Another sensitive period that begins at birth is that of math patterns, which lasts until roughly age three and a half. And then after that time, it switches over to more traditional mathematical concepts. Some of you may find it surprising, but Dr. Montessori observed that babies are born with mathematical minds. Their brains are already hardwired to take in and learn mathematical concepts. And while we're not talking about babies coming out of the womb doing algebra, we are talking about very basic maths that are required as a foundation for being able to do those things later on in life. Some ways to support your child during this sensitive period include during playtime, giving them opportunities to stack items by size. Young children take great pleasure in sorting items into different categories, such as animals, vehicles, or even just normal everyday objects like pom-poms and buttons, and you can sort them into things like type, size, and color. It's also incredibly beneficial to, from very early on, count with your child out loud in natural everyday situations. So for example, as you go up and down the stairs with your child, you can just count the steps that you're taking every single time. Or during playtime, as they're playing, if they have a little basket of cars or vehicles of some sort, you can count with them. Okay, let's see, how many cars do you have? One, two, three. And finally, don't be afraid to use numbers in normal everyday conversation with your child. So for example, you could say to them while you're getting dressed, okay, you have two choices. Would you like the blue pants today or the black pants? Or if you're in the kitchen with your child making a snack together, you can take a look at the fruit bowl and say, okay, let's take a look and see how many bananas do we have left in the bowl? I see one, two, three. We have three bananas. It's as simple as that. The next sensitive period, which also begins at birth, is emotional control. And this one lasts until roughly age two and a half. Now this sensitive period is all about relationships, communication with other people, and learning to control their own emotions. Your child is best supported during the sensitive period by incorporating respectful parenting and positive discipline practices into your home, where your child is treated respectfully at all times, and they're helped by the adults in the house to learn how to control their own emotions until they're able to do it on their own. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to do this, like practically speaking, I do have some videos on positive discipline that you can watch and I will link them down below for you in case you're interested. And this would be in direct opposition to the more traditional system of rewards and punishments, which actually don't really help the child to learn how to control their own emotions in a positive, healthy, or productive manner at all. The next sensitive period is order, which begins at age six months and lasts until approximately three and a half years old. This sensitive period is all about your child's innate and very intense need for a sense of order in their environment. Children thrive in an orderly environment where things are very predictable and everything has a place. Children who grow up in very chaotic environments with no routines or rhythms to their day tend to have a much harder time handling their emotions and processing things, which then carries on over into their adult lives. Some ways to support your child during the sensitive period for order is to first set the standard that everything in your home has a place where it belongs. And then from there, you can model and encourage your child to make sure that they're cleaning up after themselves after something has been taken out for use. You also want to make sure that you set daily rhythms and routines for your child and then adhere to them as best as you can so that your child's day is predictable for them because you will often find that typical, normal, everyday tantrums as parents often see them are just your child's reaction, a natural reaction to a disruption to their everyday sense of order in their routine. The next sensitive period is an interest in small objects, which begins at age 12 months and lasts until approximately three and a half years old. Now, while this sensitive period may seem very funny and interesting to an adult, it's actually a very important one because ultimately what this interest leads to is your child developing their fine motor control, which is a very important prerequisite for writing. This is also why children crawling on the ground often find great fascination with tiny little crumbs. Some great ways to 
support your child during their sensitive period for an interest in small objects is to make sure that you have those things available in their environment. So for example, during practical life activities, making sure that you have child-sized tools available for them to use. During meal times from about nine months onward, you want to make sure that all finger foods that you're serving are cut up into small bite-sized pieces as we discussed earlier so that they can naturally practice picking up the different bits of food. And finally, simply get outside with your child more. Rocks, sticks, grass, bugs, all of these things provide very engaging and natural stimuli for your child during this time. The next sensitive period is that of toilet learning, and this typically tends to occur between the ages of 12 and 18 months. Otherwise referred to as potty training, in a Montessori environment, it is called toilet learning because the child is gradually learning how to use the toilet at his or her own pace and without rewards or consequences. Learning to use the toilet is viewed as a natural skill to master just like any of their other milestones and it is treated as such. So it is not something that a child is forced to do over the course of a very prescribed three days with a system of bribes. Some easy ways to support your child during their sensitive period for toilet learning are first and foremost when they are still in diapers to make sure that you are responding immediately to their wet diapers so that the child learns to connect the feeling of being wet with their need for elimination. You should allow your child to see you and other members of the family using the toilet as often as possible. As we all know, good modeling is usually the best way to go, but it also helps to allow your child to feel like using the toilet is a normal everyday routine and it's a lot less scary for them when the time comes. From the time that your child is able to stand independently, you can actually begin changing their diapers standing up as opposed to laying on the ground. And this allows your child to be able to look down and kind of observe what's going on and participate in the process a lot better. And you can actually allow them to participate if they are one of those kids that really likes to pull the tabs off the diaper, that can actually be pretty helpful. You should also begin changing all of your child's diapers in the bathroom whenever possible. This helps your child to establish a connection between bodily functions and the room of the house where they naturally occur. And once formal toilet learning or potty training has actually begun for your child, and this does not happen until your child is showing signs of readiness, again, it's at their own pace, many families find it helpful to make several small potty seats available in different rooms of the house, just to make sure that your child is set up for success and independence, and to make them feel a little bit more confident about getting on and off the toilet by themselves. If you are interested in learning more about the Montessori way to potty train your child, I do have an entire Montessori potty training video that shares very specific information, all of the tools that you might require, and step-by-step -step guidance on how to guide your child through that process. And I will be sure to link that video down below for you. The next sensitive period is vocabulary, which begins at age 12 months and arguably from birth. As we've already briefly touched upon, all children are born with a natural absorption of language from the moment that they are born. So it is important to immerse your child in very rich language opportunities, and especially once they hit that 12 month mark, that is typically when most children will start uttering their first words. So it really becomes a priority from that point on, if it wasn't already before that, to make sure that you are providing your child with those opportunities to help develop their vocabulary. Some of the best ways to support your child in their sensitive period for vocabulary acquisition is to make sure that you are talking to your child about everything that you are doing throughout the day. The more opportunities they have to hear you talking to them and to see your mouth moving and have one-on-one -on -one conversations, the better off they're going to be. So this means that you cannot substitute learning a language through a screen for actual one-on-one -on -one human interaction. It's just not the same. You should also be reading with your child as as often as you can, ideally every single day. It is incredibly beneficial for your child, not just for that one-on-one -on -one time with you, but for the general exposure to lots of different types of language and to words that perhaps you might not use in your normal everyday conversations at home. Another sensitive period referred to as the special epic for sensations by Dr. Montessori begins at age two and a half and lasts until six and a half. It is during this sensitive period that children are best able to learn through the tactile physical sense of touch as opposed to just hearing or seeing
teaching what it is that they're supposed to be learning. To support a child who is going through the sensitive period for sensations, you want to make sure that you're providing lots of hands-on opportunities for play and learning and lots of outdoor playtime. Also, when you're showing them how to do something, you want to make sure that you're actually showing them up close and then giving them an opportunity to try on their own, as opposed to just trying to tell them from across the room how to do something. This also bleeds over into the area of discipline. If you want your child to get down off of a chair that they are dangerously climbing on, it is often best to physically go over to the child and help them down while explaining that it's dangerous, as opposed to yelling, get off of that chair from across the room. The next sensitive period is for letter shapes and sounds. And this sensitive period begins at age two and a half and lasts until approximately five years old. During this sensitive period, Dr. Montessori observed that children were very naturally drawn to actually tracing the shapes of letters on sandpaper letters and learning their different sounds. To support a child who is in this sensitive period, you want to make sure that you are focusing on teaching them phonics, which is the sounds of letters, as opposed to the names of letters. So for example, instead of saying, this is C-A-T, cat, you would say, this is if you are interested in actually introducing sandpaper letters to your child at home to use, then there are a thousand different DIY sandpaper letter tutorials that you can find online that are very easy to do at home with very simple materials. However, if you are interested in purchasing an actual set of Montessori sandpaper letters to use with your child, you can purchase them online at places like Amazon and various different Montessori supply companies. And finally, there is a book called Montessori Letter Work that you can purchase on Amazon and it actually has sandpaper letters in it with pictorial examples for your child and I have personally found that it's a great addition to my children's library. The next sensitive period is music which begins at age three. It is during this sensitive period that children are very naturally able to learn musical qualities like rhythm, pitch, and melody and music has been proven by research time and again to be excellent for brain growth so it's a great catalyst for learning in other areas including academics and emotion control. Some ways to support a child who is in the midst of a sensitive period for music is to provide musical instruments in your home for your child to play with independently, but also take the time at times to play them with your child. And if you actually play an instrument, it's incredibly beneficial to have your child sit down with you while you practice, allow them to observe what it is that you're doing, and if you feel comfortable with it, then you can invite them to actually try for themselves. It's also pretty common knowledge that children love to sing, so sing with your child as often as as you can. And finally, while listening to music with your child, it is totally okay to listen to normal everyday contemporary music, but it's also a great boon to your child's development to take the time to listen to high quality classical music pieces together as well. The final sensitive periods are that of reading and writing, which begin at age three. Now, these sensitive periods occur naturally to the child as the right materials and environment are provided and once they're showing signs of readiness. So there's no need to rush your child into these specialty core academics before they're ready with flashcards or other very gimmicky early learning tools. Some ways to support your child during these sensitive periods are to first and foremost, offer lots of reading time with your child from the moment that they're born. And as they grow older, follow their interests in different book topics and make sure that you're selecting things that they find engaging. One mistake that parents often make is to read a book with a very monotone voice or they read too quickly. When you're reading with your child, it's very important to slow down. Read very slowly so that your child can process what it is that you're saying. Make sure that you use proper tone and inflection as you're reading the story, just as if you were having a conversation with someone as opposed to reading it on the page. You want it to have a very natural conversational flow as you read because this is a lot more understandable for your child. You will also find that your child will be much more engaged in the book that you're reading together if you kind of let go a little bit, find your inner child, and don't be afraid to use silly or fun voices for the different characters that are in the book. 
And as your child does become older and more verbal and they're able to have conversations with you, you can actually take moments during the story to pause and ask them a question about what it is that you're reading. So you might ask them to clarify something that happened in the story on that page. Or you might pause before a very pivotal moment in the story and ask them what they think is going to happen next. This really engages your child and gets them thinking about the storyline and it just makes the experience that much more enticing. You may also notice that as your child begins getting closer to the age of three, that they are going to begin enjoying stories that have a very rhymy pattern to the words or even just classic nursery rhymes that have lots of rhyming words in them. And they're going to enjoy wordplay a lot as well. Once your child is actually learning the different sounds of the letters, you can start reading Bob books with them. And if you've never seen them before, I will put a link to them down below. But they are different sets of books that focus on the different elements of phonics in a very progressive nature that allow your child to eventually begin reading on their own. And finally, there are all sorts of early phonics and reading games and activities that you can play at home with your child. A quick Google search for Montessori phonics activities will yield countless results, but I will be sure to put a few links down below for you guys to check out. And writing is supported through the use of sandpaper letters, salt or sand trays, and then eventually the movable alphabet before an actual pen and paper is ever introduced. And there is no need to go out and buy these things for your child to use at home if you're planning to have them attend a Montessori preschool because these materials will be available for them to use in their classrooms. Now, if you are planning to homeschool in a Montessori environment, then you might consider purchasing a set of these materials for your child to use at home. But again, if they're going to a regular Montessori preschool outside of the home, then it's actually best to not have them in the home. This way they are more engaging to your child once they get to school. So those are all the sensitive periods as defined by Dr. Montessori. If you have any useful information to add to the discussion about supporting your child through these different sensitive periods, then please be sure to share that in the comments down below. If you liked today's video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And just in case you are new to my channel, I did want to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye!